dear audience, uh, I'm very honored to present my collaborate this collaborative work with Deborah Park, Lei Wang, and Scott Rosilla. And my name is Jiayin Chen. I'm an assistant professor at the uh, School of Applied Economics at Renmin University of China. And the paper I'm going to present today is titled Parenting Style and Children's Time Preference Evidence from a Randomized Control Trial in China. Okay, uh, first is about the motivation. Um, as we know, time preference is gaining um, increasing popularities uh, in economic research uh, because time preference is because scholars find time preference is very important in determining in determining other outcome variables. Even young children's time preference can be highly correlated with their like uh, academic performance and their labor market outcomes and their occupational choice. But previous literatures mostly focus on uh, how time preference affects other outcomes, but how time preference is formed is like a black box that uh, much uh, uh, there's uh, th that need more attention. So um, in this paper, I we focus on how time preference is formed, especially during early uh, childhood. Um, why we link early childhood experience with time preference? That's because on the one hand, early childhood we know is a very critical period of developing like cognitive skills, non-cognitive skills, and other kinds of preference. There are a lot of uh, literatures have examined the, their correlations. And there are also some um, theoretical papers imply that parents actually um, can, can, can make investment to make children more patient. Uh, like the I'm sorry. Um, please, okay, please unmute. I'm not sure, please. Since there's too much noises uh, in the background. Uh, oh, uh, is that me? Uh, I think it's not me. It's not me. Okay, no. it's fine. It's fine now. Uh, like in Baker's paper, they think um, if the parents, they can lead the children to focus more on the future, then the children will be more patient. And anyway, um, there are some, uh, they can, theoretically, those um, Scholars think parents can make investment to make children more patient, but there is little empirical evidence to test um, their correlations. Uh, uh, to the best of my uh, knowledge, there are two related studies um, and they test the direct correlation between uh, socioeconomic status and children's time purpose, and they find uh, children from high SES are more patient than children from low SES. And those scholars propose uh, parenting style or parenting practice may be one mediators uh, in linking uh, socioeconomic background and uh, children's time purpose. But as I will discuss uh, in maybe next two slides, uh, they only offer some suggestive evidence um, that their, the correlation is not causally tested. Okay, that's from the uh, economist. Actually, this uh, question, this research question, uh, children's time preference or uh, children's self-control uh, receive uh, much, uh, a, a lot of attention from psychology. Uh, and from psychological, especially developmental uh, psychology, uh, parenting style actually plays a, uh, the most dominant role in shaping children's time purpose because they think being patient actually is imposed by parents. Children don't know what is time purpose. They don't know what is 
being patient. So you're just told by their parents that you should study hard today and then you will have a bright future. Um, so first is like a conduct rule imposed by parents and then gradually internalized. Uh, if, be if being patient is taught by parents, then the parenting style, uh, how parents interact children, with children uh, is very crucial because that can affect children's compliance. Uh, too, if, the, the, if parents impose too much control, then children will be rebellious. But if, the, if parents impose too little control, then children will not listen to the parents. And other, other, on the other hand, if the parents show a, a, a high level of warmth or they praise uh, children a lot, then children will be more compliant. So if we combine these two dimensions together, uh, we will come to this conclusion. That is authoritative parents have a larger chance to cultivate patient children. Uh, in, an, in this uh, figure, I will show you what is uh, authoritative parenting and uh, uh, what different kinds of uh, parenting styles uh, they are, how they are different from each other. Uh, first, let's uh, focus on two dimensions. One is the level of control. So you'll see from low control to high control. The other dimension is worms or how responsive, uh, responsive parents show to children. Uh, we have low worms to high worms. So this two dimension uh, divide, uh, they divide uh, the space into uh, four, uh, four, uh, four areas. And what is authoritative parenting? Authoritative parenting combines a media level of control and a high level of words. Um, in contrast, authoritarian uh, parenting style uh, is of high level of words, but low level of uh, high level of control, but low level of words. Uh, another, the third uh, parenting style is called permissive style. Uh, it combines high level of words, but low level of control. And that's the, 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 the classification of parenting style. And as we discussed, uh, children are, um, they, they uh, they 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 sh uh, they like uh, they like high words, but they, they hate high control. But the, for for being patient or time purpose, uh, the if the control level is too low, then children won't uh, learn how to be be patient. So the authoritative. Uh, parenting style that of a middle level of control and high level of words is the most suitable for uh, cultivating patient children. Uh, that's from the theoretical part. Uh, even for the uh, empirical part, uh, those uh, psychologists they have done some small, uh, very small sample uh, experiment, like they gather like twenty children uh, and their parents. They let the parents teach the children to, 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 to be patient, like don't touch a gift or resist the temperation from food. Then they record, they just record how the parents' uh, behaviors and the wording they use. Then uh, the, the experiment will uh, classify their uh, parenting style into authoritative type or authoritarian type or permissive type. And finally, they find uh, the parents who are more consistent with uh, authoritative type, uh, their children are more patient. That's how psychologists, uh, um, they, they, uh, they, that's how psychologists uh, answer the question of how uh, children's time preference is for. And uh, 
combining uh, the literatures in economics and the psychology, uh, we find uh, first there's lack of empirical evidence, especially the empirical evidence uh, the economists uh, prefer uh, that we have a larger sample size and we can test the causal uh, correlation. Uh, that is because first, uh, most studies like of a comprehensive measurement of both children's time preference and parenting practice. And second, uh, even the two relative studies I talked uh, once by Armin Falk, uh, they, they have comprehensive measurement, but in their measurement, the parenting style is endogenously, uh, endogenously determined. So again, they can't test the causal relationship. And what we did in this study, uh, we use a randomized uh, Parenting, okay, it shouldn't be parenting. Uh, I, I, I replace all the parenting with a home visiting program. I think that is more appropriate. So we use a randomized home uh, visiting program in rural China and the test how it's linked to uh, preschool children's time preference. Uh, what's, uh, why we think we can answer the research question using this data set, because first uh, we have measurement of children's time preference using uh, incentivized experiment. And second, we also have longitudinal measurement of parenting practice. And the third, uh, the RCT in this survey is designed to encourage authoritative parenting so we can at least partly solve the endogeneity issues. And uh, we think we can make some unique contributions First, we can um, provide uh, some normal evidence of development of economic preferences. And also uh, if uh, we, we think uh, economic preferences are highly correlated with um, later outcomes, then we can answer the origins of inequality at an early age. And we can also provide a new perspective to understand and evaluate the value of early childhood interventions, because we, we know uh, this con uh, the, uh, the early childhood interventions have been conducted for years in many countries, but um, uh, the current literatures mainly focus on how it affects like health conditions or cognitive skills. Those uh, non-cognitive skills or economic purpose, are, are uh, they are neglected, but actually they are highly correlated with other outcomes. And third, because we use a sample uh, in rural China, so it, the, the samples we use are quite a very policy related. Uh, here are some preview of our findings. First, we find the home, okay, the, the home visiting intervention, sorry, again. It can increase uh, preschool children's patients uh, measured two and a half years later. And the treatment effect is larger if the main caregiver hasn't changed during this period. period. That means the treatment uh, is very likely, likely to, uh, to, uh, to affect children's time preference through caregiver. And third, um, the intervention has a positive and persistent impact on authoritative parenting style, but little impact on uh, other possible mechanisms. And fourth, uh, we, we find the treatment effect is larger if the children are taken care of by grandparents. In, our, in other words, uh, the left behind children. Okay. Uh, in the second part, they have a very uh, brave model uh, to, to 
uh, to show how the uh, home visiting uh, intervention uh, enter into the production function of time preference. So, so before we go into model, I, I want to ask a, a, a kind of general question. So mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you know this kind of RCT uh, is conducted in relatively short period of time, like a few years, um, mm -hmm. um, do you have any uh, evidence saying that those uh, kids, uh, say children's patients, um, has been relatively constant over their lifetime? So one uh, uh, counter argument will be, you know, even if you uh, do not do this kind of intervention, uh, these kids uh, will catch up sooner or later. You know, during this uh, short period of uh, RCT, yeah, you see some effects, but if um, the, the, the data is uh, sufficiently long, then the effect will go away because uh, even those untreated the children, their patient will catch up. So uh, so that that is uh, a counter argument. So I'm wondering if you have anything to say on, on that, say that the kid's patient is, uh, it's almost like you know. Uh, once uh, once uh, uh, you you check that the, at the age of three, and then you know after ten years it will be relatively stable around that number. Um. Thank you for the question. And uh, maybe I'm sorry. Maybe I can't answer your question with this data site because we only measure time preference once. Uh, because when the when the intervention starts. Uh, they are just uh, babies. Uh, they are under two years old, and we didn't have measurement of time buffer at that time. But after two years from the end of the intervention, we had this measurement. So first, uh, I think we can avoid that we only capturing a, a, a temporary effect because it's the, the intervention already uh, already finished uh, over two years. But second, uh, and uh, we only follow them like three years. So maybe it is hard to observe how you they- know, I understand in your sample, it's, 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 it's impossible to do that, but is there any evidence you know, oh, okay. or in the oh, literature? I see. Any documentation I see. of uh, the stationary of uh, patients in the lifetime? Okay, I see. Um, I need double check, but um, to, to the best of my knowledge, uh, very few studies have a um, longitudinal measurement of children's time preference. Okay, I see. So now uh, the, the, so the common understanding is that it's like uh, uh, given at birth. So it's relatively stable. So that's, uh, that's, uh, mm -hmm. that's the, accepted notion or you know mm -hmm. um, okay i see mm -hmm. i also have a just broad uh, question like i imagine this uh, intervention would uh, help the children in many many dimensions right they might have better cognitive ability non-cognitive mm -hmm. ability they more become more patient etc etc is it possible to know which is most important in predicting their I don't know, success So I don't know, performance um, in school or, or what is most important? I just okay. Oh, I, I see your question, a good point. Uh, first, uh, there are many literatures they find um, the, 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 the intervention effect on like cognitive skills uh, fade out after several years. Uh -huh. But then the intervention effect on like employment or income, they emerge as those children uh, grow up. I think that's one puzzle why we, 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 we why uh, in, the, in the area, I mean, between their uh, early childhood and adulthood, uh, we, we can't see any correlations. And uh, Maybe I think my our paper can answer this question. That is, there are some uh, observed mechanism like the time preference or other kinds of economic uh, economic preference uh, that plays a role. That we, if we don't measure it at early childhood, then we neglect 
this mechanism, but actually uh, they have very uh, important impact on some later uh, out outcomes. Uh, and second, back in this study, uh, the other scholars, they do find a short-term uh, impact on children's uh, cognitive skills. But after two years, we find the, the impact on cognitive skills uh, also faded out. So later I will show you that I uh, have done many tests, like how uh, the intervention affects children's outcomes and also uh, par uh, parents, uh, uh, parent, other kinds of parenting uh, practice. Now we find uh, the only the impact on parenting style is, uh, is prominent, is substantial. Uh, maybe because the, the the whole intervention is designed to uh, promote uh, high quality uh, parenting style and then hoping it can affect children's outcomes. Um, yeah. But which one is more important and which one is less important? Uh, maybe it is not the focus of this study because we didn't find any in, uh, intervention effect on cognitive skill. Okay. Yeah, let, let's see, you know, how do you influence the parenting style? I tried to improve my parenting style so hard, but uh, I just failed. So I'm really curious, how, how do you do this intervention? Uh, okay, uh, there's, okay, I will show you. Maybe you show you. Let's continue. Okay, that's a very uh, simple model. Uh, uh, we suppose the children's time preference uh, is, it, it can be influenced by like children's uh, individual characteristics, uh, especially age and uh, cognitive skills. These two are widely, I think they are wi uh, widely uh, accepted uh, factors in determining, in determining time preference. And then is the parenting, a uh, parent's time preference because that, that, that would be uh, intergenerational transmission, but there is mixed evidence. Some people find there's positive uh, transmission and others find there's no transmission. And then the, the last of three factors, they are the uh, investment parents can make, uh, the monetary investment, the parenting style investment, investment and then the time investment and how does the home visiting program affect uh, children's time preference uh, first it can change the 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 the, uh, the 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 above investment and second it can also change the production parameters but unluckily because we only have um, the measurement of time preference at one point so we are not able to test uh, this channel, okay? Uh, that's a very uh, brave model. And just to show you how uh, the home visiting uh, program enter into the production function of time preference. Uh, let's go to the experimental design. Uh, is the data I use is part of the early childhood intervention program in China. Uh, it covers the rural sample in one prefecture in Shanxi province. So it's, um, um, it's, in, it's a mountainous area and relatively poor compared to the whole nation. It's initiated in October uh, 2014. And at that time, our um, sample, their babe infants, they were 18 to 32 months old and the intervention lasted for six months. Uh, we did a uh, follow-up uh, survey immediately after the intervention ends, and we did a second follow-up in the July 2007, uh, 2017. Um, we have in total over 100 village, uh, some of them, are assigned as treaty village and the other are assigned as non-treaty village. 
and among those treaty village, only 212 households are offered the home visiting intervention, but the other 177 are not. Uh, this is designed to test the, the spillover effect, but actually we didn't find any uh, spillover effect. So I just include those uh, non-treated uh, household in the treated village in the control group, and that uh, won't uh, affect the uh, main findings, but that can increase the statistical power. And all the treated household, they agree to participate in the intervention. And that is how the intervention works. Uh, the trainers, uh, which um, uh, are actually they are recruited from the family planning committee officials, they paid weekly visit to each treated household and they uh, have a, and they, uh, the curriculum is specially designed to accommodate China, uh, Chinese people's need. And the first is adopted from the Jamaican uh, early childhood uh, intervention. And uh, each visit will cover two out of four modules. Uh, those four modules include cognition, language, uh, social emotional skills, and the motor skills. Here is one example. Uh, each lesson, it, it has a task. And this is the example of taking care of younger siblings. And the trainer will firstly show how to accomplish the task, step by step, and then let the mother repeat it. Uh, like they have a baby doll and they uh, play a game with uh, the children. They let the children uh, uh, take care of the baby doll. Uh, suppose the baby doll is their younger siblings. Um, in each lesson, they have different focus. Like this uh, lesson is from the social emotional skill module. But even it's like a model, uh, if, if it's from the model module, then the trainer will play balls with the children and then let the mother or like like sometimes let the grandmother repeat. Um, but no matter which module this uh, lesson is from, each uh, curriculum uh, will have some uh, instructions on how to interact with this baby. Uh, like the mother should hug the baby if he or she succeeds. The mother should encourage the baby to try another time if he or she fails. Uh, almost in each uh, lesson, they have such uh, instructions. And if we go back to the Jamaican early childhood uh, development interventions, actually, this intervention is it aims to improve mother's self esteem and enjoyment in raising their children. And there are the encouraged maternal behaviors include like responsiveness to, to the child's mood, uh, mediating the environment for the child, introducing new uh, subjects, giving positive feedback, celebrating children's uh, child's achievement, achievements and showing love. They are ex exactly the elements of uh, authoritative parenting. Uh, remember authoritative parenting is a combination of media level of control and high level of worms or high level of responsiveness. So the Jamaican uh, intervention, uh, many scholars uh, directly test how it affects children's uh, cognitive skills, but Actually, it was designed to improve parenting practice. So we believe uh, this RCT can uh, have a, a direct and causal impact on authoritative parenting. So I can see, um, you know, uh, the, the training uh, sort of uh, uh, 
uh, improves uh, or you know push parents uh, mm -hmm. uh, to move towards author uh, authoritative uh, parenting. But I still don't see why you know uh, authoritative parenting has to do with kids' patience. So uh, uh, it's, it's it's not clear to me why. Oh, this part uh, is from the psychology uh, literatures. Um, the psycho developmental psychologists think um, because being patient is like a conduct imposed by parents. Like you must finish homework today. Uh, you must save in the piggy bank. Uh, children don't know why they should do this. What is being patient? What is time purpose? They just obey their parents' uh, instruction. Then how parents convey their instruction is very important because uh, being patient is painful for children uh, and the ch other children are uh, short-sighted. So if uh, the, children, uh, the parents show a lot of love or warmth or responsiveness uh, when they convey this uh, instruction, then children will be more compliant. That's how, okay, so that's from the psychologists, psychological literatures. So if uh, Chinese parents are more uh, permissive, and then, you know, if they move into authoritative uh, parenting, I, I can see that. But, you know, my understanding is uh, uh, rural households in China, they, they, they are more kind of uh, authoritarian parenting. Mm -hmm. which I think probably, so if you don't do that, then we'll beat you up. So does that kind of uh, uh, help uh, kids to build up patience? For instance, you don't mm -hmm. finish uh, homework, I just beat oh, you up. Oh, um, no, I don't think so, because um, as I just said, how, how parents interact with children is important. If the uh, parents use very hard parenting, then the children will be repellent uh, to the parents' uh, instruction. Uh, but if the uh, but if the parents just leave uh, children alone, they don't teach them how to be patient, like how to study hard, then the children will never learn to be patient by themselves. That's why I said uh, the authoritative parenting that combines a uh, media level of control and the high level of worms is the most uh, uh, suitable parenting. Uh, the part that, that still confused me is, you know, the distinction between how much time you mm -hmm. invest in your kids mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. the switch from, uh, you know, one parenting style to, to another. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me, you know, uh, I'm just trying to understand if there is a way in your experiment to disentangle the two forces. So you're mm -hmm. trying to let parents spend more time with their kids versus so you feel like uh, uh, this experiment just uh, successfully tells parents uh, to switch their parenting style. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, I think uh, the time investment is like quantity but the parenting style is like quality. And uh, yeah, later in, in the analysis, we have measurement of both the quantity and both the quality. But to me, to be honest, these two, sometimes they are just entangled. They are overlapped. It's hard to totally distinguish from one from the, the other. But, but you can just say, you know, uh, time is is the key thing for 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 patients instead of you know telling us uh, uh, switching parenting styles which I think is much harder to achieve right um uh, do you mean that um, maybe increasing time with children can be another explanation of why this intervention works yeah exactly is possible yes it's possible but first are uh, from the literatures we've uh, they find the quality of the intervention is more important than the quantity of uh, i mean the quality of uh, 
interaction is more important than the quantity of interaction. And second, actually, we do we do find a significant uh, positive impact on their uh, interactions just shortly after the uh, after the intervention, but after two years, uh, the treatment effect on the interaction, the time spent with children uh, is much smaller. Uh, shall I go on? Uh, next is how we measure children's time preference. Uh, it's only available in the second follow-up survey, and we adopt a classical marshmallow test. Uh, it's widely used in psychology literatures and also uh, used in some economic uh, papers. Uh, it's quite simple. First, the children will be offered with one cookie in the front. Uh, in, in the original test, they use marshmallow. So that's why it's called marshmallow test. And then uh, we tell the children, the experimenter will be away uh, for 15 minutes and they can eat the cookie uh, at any time. But if they can wait for 15 minutes, they will be awarded a second cookie. So we just record how long they can wait. And uh, the longer they can wait, uh, the more patient they are. And the waiting time at most is 15 minutes because the experimenter will return uh, after 15 minutes. And because we do this experiment, uh, we don't do this in the lab. Uh, we try to uh, standardize the field experiment. Uh, on the one hand, we record the experimental conditions and also control for them in the regression, like the venue, uh, any uh, distract, uh, distractions, uh, and uh, whether <clears throat> uh, the experimenter think the child likes the cookie. And second, um, we are afraid that the children uh, are unfamiliar with the experimenters, so they don't trust them. We make the experimenter play a while with the children before the test starts. So at least they, when the, uh, during the uh, marshmallow test, they are already familiar with each other. And compared to other uh, studies, uh, which use uh, like uh, 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 intertemporal choice questions to measure uh, children's time preference, we think using food as incentives have several advantages. First, it puts children in a real situation that they must uh, overcome the temperation, also the frust uh, frustrations, and it is is more. Uh, I mean, is uh, is more appropriate for preschool children because I remember in one uh, study they use intertemporal choice question that make the children uh, making choice between like one candy today or two candies tomorrow. They found some three-year-old children have difficulties in understanding what is tomorrow. And second, uh, because the delay in the marshmallow test is 15 minutes uh, at most, is much shorter. And the promised awards are present during the test. So that can uh, partly reduce uh, the concern of risk preference and trust. So I, I have a question here. Mm -hmm. So you said that those, uh, it seems like the, the children are very young, right? In the experiment, they are like uh, two or three years old. Do they have a sense oh, of- they, they are three to five years old in the experiment. Okay, two, two. So do they have a sense about like what 15 minutes means? Is it a very long time for them or it is a very short time for them? Uh, I, sometimes, sometimes when you talk with those kids, they, they, don't have, they don't understand what 15 minutes means. They, 
<laughs> they may think it is like a one million years or or, or some. So I, 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 do you have any sense about it? I mean, how the children think of these 15 minutes? Mm, I'm sorry, we, we didn't have any questions related to how they, uh, how, how, how they how they uh, think about 15 minutes. But I think com compared to those who use uh, like one day as a delay, 15 minutes is, is, uh, is more uh, like, it's, it's easier to understand than one day later or one week later. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, here is the distribution of uh, the waiting time in minutes. Uh, we see actually uh, over 40% uh, in both uh, control group and treatment group, they can wait for they can wait for 15 minutes. And apparently, uh, those who can wait for 15 minutes, the proportion is higher in treatment group and control group. And we see most uh, children, they either eat it very uh, quickly or they can wait it for 15 minutes. But very few, uh, they have successfully waited for over 10 minutes, but they can't wait it to the last minute. And uh, uh, we follow the conventions of using a uh, uh, marshmallow test, we record it. Uh, those who we classify those who waited for 15 minutes as patient and those who count as inpatient. And we also try uh, to, to, to use their waiting time as a continuous variable in the regression. And uh, compared to other, uh, other, can, other, survey, uh, other study, like in Michelle's, uh, who is the father of this marshmallow test, uh, I think the proportion of people, of children who can wait for 15 minutes is comparable uh, to their study uh, because uh, the average age of my sample is older than his sample. Uh, and uh, not surprisingly, the proportion of being patient is higher than uh, their uh, sample. Uh, next, uh, we have um, a longitudinal measurement of parenting style, but using different kinds of questions. In the baseline and the first follow-up, we only have five. So, so I, I, I have one more question here about the mm -hmm. experimental pro procedure. So when the experimenter give one cookie to the child, they will leave the, the, the site or they will stay there? They leave the site. They believe yes. that. So is mm -hmm. is. I mean, I was wondering whether the children's parents will say something to the children about. I mean, about about. Uh, maybe the the, the the parents may push the, the children to wait for a long time. Is it possible? Oh, um, the the kid will be uh will be alone in one separate room. So theoretically, the parents are not are not present. Oh, so you mean that the, 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 the child is, is uh, staying in a single room and then uh, yeah, the mother yeah, give a cookie alone. to them and then they will stay in the room alone? Yeah. So, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the baseline and first follow up, uh, we have five uh, questions. Is how parents use yelling, spanking, or taking away twice or times out? or explain unreasonable, unreasonable behaviors to discipline children. And uh, they are not a standard measurement of uh, parenting style, but we can construct a non-harsh score to measure uh, whether their parenting style is uh, consistent with harsh or non-harsh. And in the second follow-up, we use a standardized uh, questionnaire called the PSDQ and let the parents fill in this questionnaire. And uh, we find 93% of uh, our sample should be cla classified as authoritative uh, parents. And that's not surprised because 
in China, authoritative parents is the most um, is the dominant group. So to uh, to show the variation of their authoritative, uh, the degree of being authoritative, we construct a continuous authoritative score. And we believe the non-hard score and the authoritative score should be positively correlated. Uh, here's some example of the PSDQ questionnaires. Uh, we also have other measurement like the children's cognitive skills in each wave, uh, the, uh, the parents' monetary investment, their time investment. We also have, it's not the parents, it's the caregiver because some children are taken care of, are taken care of by uh, grandparents, the caregiver's time purpose, but only in the second follow-up. Uh, because we conducted our RCT, the balance test and the attrition is very important. The underlying attrition, like after two years and a half from the baseline, is 11.5%. Uh, we think is relatively low compared to other, uh, to other uh, home visiting programs, like uh, in Heckman's study, is also conducted in China, uh, the attrition rate is as high as uh, 32%. But we have the differential attrition problem. The attrition rate is significantly lower in the treatment group than the control group. Uh, to overcome this, uh, this differential attrition uh, problem, uh, we have those four solutions not solution, but discussions. First, we show the post-attrition sample is still balanced. Uh, then we show the attrition sample is balanced as well. And then we construct uh, inverse probability weight and use it in all the uh, main regressions. And we also show that actually the main results are similar with and without the uh, IPW. So it is not a, a big problem to the regression result. And at last, we estimate a worst case scenario. Uh, we, we assign very bad results to a treaters in the treatment group. I ass we assume zero of them are patient, but we assign good results to the treaters in the control group like we assume 20% uh, percent of them are patient, 40% or 40 percent and 60%. And we still find a positive uh, impact of the intervention um, being patient. But of course, uh, as we assign a larger proportion uh, to the control group, the uh, estimator is less statistically significant. Uh, this is the uh, balance test of the post uh, attrition group uh, all of nearly all of them are quite balanced there uh, is only one exception that is the baseline cognitive skill the this is cognitive delay that means a larger proportion of control group suffers from cognitive uh, delay um, so we control, actually we control for uh, baseline cognitive skills in other regression. And here's how we do the uh, construct uh, the inverse probability weight. And the identification strategy is quite uh, straightforward because we uh, have, a, we have this RCT sighting. So I just put the time preference on the left hand side and put the treatment on the right-hand side. Um, we also control uh, for, uh, for X, the personal household and household controls. We only control for baseline cognitive skills because this one we find is unbiased in the baseline and also uh, early assignment to a nutrition uh, RCT. That's some um, uh, early RCT for this uh, for this sample, 
And then we control for the uh, experiment controls county dummies, cohort dummies, enumerator dummies, etc. Here is the results. Um, this is uh, in panel A, we use uh, the dummy variable uh, being uh, waited for uh, 15 minutes or not at the uh, dependent variable in panel B. We use a continuous uh, measure of waiting time. And uh, we find that it has a significantly positive impact on uh, being patient. That means uh, participation in the uh, home visiting program make the children more likely to wait for 15 minutes by like nine percentage point. And uh, in the second row, we construct the same caregiver sample. That's because we find during this three year, um, almost one third of the children have changed the main caregiver, like change from mother to grandmother or from grandmother to mother. And the, if we think the intervention mainly affect the, the caregiver, then those who haven't changed caregiver should be uh, should receive um, the intensity uh, of intervention should be larger. And if we can confine the sample to the same caregiver sample, uh, we indeed we find the magnitude is larger. So and I'm what, trying to understand so, uh, what, what do you mean control for baseline cognitive uh, skills. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, this question related to uh, one of the uh, questions raised by Xinjiang earlier, that is uh, the understanding of a 15 uh, minutes uh, time interval. <clears throat> Suppose, you know, those are treated families that they spend more time uh, with kids and they manage to uh, educate kids, uh, let them understand better about time. Then the kids, uh, well, better inform the kids that they might be willing to wait for uh, 15 minutes to get their candy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that doesn't really, uh, you know, uh, directly increase their uh, uh, patience. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah. So how, how do you do that? How do you control that uh, channel, you know, in this uh, specification? Maybe based mm -hmm. on cognitive skills have already control for that, but just, just want to uh, clarify on that. Mm, okay. Uh, first, I control for baseline cognitive skill because I find it's, it's unbalanced between control and the treatment. So we need to control for it in the regression model. Uh, second, uh, yes, the the... How, to, uh, how children understand or interpret 15 minutes is uh, if it's correlated with their current uh, cognitive skills. Uh, I think so. I think I think that that that's how they under, their understanding uh, can be determined by their uh, cognitive skills. So, and we did uh, trade increasing cognitive skill as one possible channel. So later, uh, uh, we show the intervention effect on their cognitive skills, but actually we didn't find any significant uh, in, in, uh, effect on their cognitive skills. That means uh, that's not uh, likely to be the channel. I uh, was wondering, uh, have you checked like the correlation between like family background and the patient's measure is that poor kids are less patient in general? Are there's a gap or left or left behind the case or it's just uh, then you say, oh, look, this uh, experiment intervention actually can narrow the gap by how much? Mm -hmm. oh, oh, okay. I, I think that's a good suggestion. Uh, I, I I'm not sure whether I have their baseline. Uh, oh no, I, I don't know. I'm not sure whether I have the patient's level of the control group by each, uh, like by the SES or by their whether they're left behind children. But I do find the we do find the intervention effect is larger for left behind children. And we, we think maybe that can be one um, one way to narrow down their uh, disparities. Uh, 
Uh, okay, I, I think I should move on. And uh, well, I, I find this uh, this this magnitude is like nine percent. And how large is it? Uh, we compare it to the magnitude of uh, cognitive skill and age, because these two are well accepted factors in uh, affecting time preference. And we find participating in the program is equivalent to one standard deviation increase in cognitive skills or 3.5 months increase in age. That means it's not a, tri a trivial uh, effect. And we also compare our uh, uh, findings with another RCT. That RCT is designed to increase uh, children's uh, 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 students, primary students' uh, time preference. Uh, they design some uh, educational program, and in their program, they find uh, the program decreased the inpatient choice by 0.3 standard deviation. Uh, even though our uh, these two uh, studies are not totally comparable, and maybe the measurement of time preference are now are very different. But in their study, they decrease inpatient by 0.3 standard deviations. But in our study, if we look at the uh, panel B, we increase um, the patient choice like by point, uh, 0 0.5 or 0 0.9 if we, we look, focus on uh, panel A. So I think both of them uh, indicate that uh, what we find is not a trivial effect. And next, we want to discuss the possible mechanisms as um, and the audience have, uh, discuss, has read this question before that the intervention can work through other ways, that it can increase uh, the children's cognitive skills, or it can uh, increase the parents' uh, time investment uh, in their children. Uh, all of them are possible mechanisms. So we test each of them. Uh, in this table three, in panel A, uh, is the intervention effect on cognitive skills in first follow-up and in the second follow-up. And we see this point estimate is very minimal, close to zero. In the second, in panel B, is uh, how uh, it is how the intervention affects uh, parenting style. And we find both in the first follow-up and the second follow-up, the intervention significantly increased non-hard parenting or authoritative parenting, and the magnitude remains uh, very large. In panel C, we test how uh, the intervention affect time investment, uh, how often the caregiver interacts with their children. Uh, we see a very large effect in the first follow-up. Uh, that, that's, but in the second follow-up, even though this uh, estimator is statistical uh, significant, but the magnitude is much smaller. Uh, that means um, it did have a uh, long-lasting uh, impact on caregiver-child interaction, but the magnitude uh, just faded out. And in panel D and panel E, which are only available in the second follow-up, okay, uh, we find uh, there's no significant impact on uh, monetary spending or caregivers' impatience themselves. So from this uh, table, we infer that uh, the intervention mainly affects children's time purpose through the parenting practice, especially the parenting style. Okay. And that's how uh, we show them uh, graphically. Um, maybe I should hurry up 
Uh, next, uh, you, because you may use one or two minutes to to wrap up. Because oh yeah, that. yeah, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. I, I may uh, I may skip this one because this one I just use uh, the participation, uh, the uh, the uh, the treatment assignment as IV for the actual number of home visit, and we find very consistent uh, patterns. And then we have this. Uh, heterogeneous treatment effect. And uh, actually, uh, maybe we should focus on column seven and column uh, eight. All right, I think that can answer Rishi's uh, question. The control mean of development the, of being patient at end line actually is not significant, uh, significantly different from each other. Uh, whether the based on caregiver's mother or grandmother. And uh, actually, if they are taken care by grandmothers, they seem more patient. And if we focus on the treatment effect, uh, both are not statistically significant, but we see the magnitude uh, of uh, this grandmother group is larger. And that may imply that it can be a good policy to promote those left behind children. Uh, at last, I also discussed about the external validity, uh, like I compare this uh, sample in one prefecture with the national rural sample, and I re-estimate with re-weight, and uh, we find a larger, uh, uh, a larger magnitude. Maybe I should skip this. Um, at last is the discussion. Maybe also skip po uh, policy implication, but discuss the limitation of the paper. First, I think identifying the magnitude of the impact of uh, parenting style on time preference is challenging. I can only provide some suggestive evidence that linking these two together. And second, maybe more follow-up service may help, but at this moment, that's not very likely. And third, um, my paper has this paper has received um, a lot of uh, criticisms uh, from other scholars, and one uh, commonly used uh, word is is too narrow because they only focus on time preference. So I'm thinking. Because the data set is already there, we can't change it, but maybe we need to work hard on the motivation part. Uh, all right, this is my presentation and uh, thank you. And all the comments are welcomed. And if you have uh, further comments or you want to discuss uh, with me, please feel free to contact me with, at this uh, email address. Uh, thank you so much. And that's the end of my presentation.